welcome back to my channel. So I just found out some shocking tea about Red's mom and I wanna talk about it in this video. So first, I do wanna give a huge shout out to a few of my subscribers. So one of my subscribers actually commented about this tea in the comments and I ended up missing the comment and then one of my other subscribers emailed me and they're like, oh my gosh, did you see this comment about Red's mom? And they ended up telling me what the comment said and Red's mom is on the registry. So I do want to give a shout out to those two subscribers for filling me in on this. I could not find the comment, so I can't find the exact name of the person, but you know who you are, and I'm super grateful. And if you guys ever have some tea you want me to know, then you can feel free to message me on IG, but the best way to get in touch with me is probably through email because I check my email multiple times a day. So Red's mom is on the registry, and I do have to be careful how I word things in this video so this video doesn't get blacklisted. So my mouth dropped when I saw that Red's mom is on the SO registry. So the SEX offender registry, if you know what I'm saying. And so she has three different charges of SA. And the craziest part about this though is she's convicted on all three charges and they're all involved with minors. So there's three victims and one of the victims was six years old, another one was seven, and another one was four, and all three of them were female. So I tried to see if I could find more details on the charges. And when I clicked on the charges, these are the footnotes that were shared. It says that it was CA, child, A-B-U-S-E, and it says offenses of SA in the first, second, and third degree may be, but are not necessarily lesser included offenses under sodomy statute and deviant SA statute. So it is important to point out that this happened in 1983 when Red's mom was only 18 years old. But still, it's three different cases with three different children under the age of seven years old. And there was enough evidence to charge her with all three cases. So here are her pictures over the years ranging from 2003 to 2023. Each year when she has to register, she has to get her picture taken. And it says she is compliant, which means that each year she registers as required. So I thought it was interesting that she is a tier level three, and that is the most serious tier level they have. So let me compare the different tier levels just so you guys can get a better picture. So a tier one offender, that is the lowest level, they have 15 years of registration requirement and they have to report to the chief law enforcement officer in person in the month of the offender's birth, so just once a year. And a tier two offender, they have a 25 year registration requirement requirement and they have to report in person semi-annually in the month of the offender's birth and six months thereafter so twice a year and she is a tier three offender and they have a lifetime registration requirement so until she dies she's gonna have to register not only that since she's tier level three she has to register every single 90 days so it says that tier three offenders are not eligible to file a petition for removal from the registration registry unless the requirement to register results from a adjudicated delinquent adjudication after 25 years and the clean record removal is met. It's been over 30 years since this crime happened so I'm assuming if it hasn't been taken off her record by now then it probably never is going to but I try to look up and down because I know the person who commented about this wanted me to do a deep dive and I wish I had more information to share with you guys but this is all I can find it shows about the complaint and it talks about the ages a female who's six a female who's seven a female who's four I am assuming since this case involves very young minors that that's probably why I can't find information on this case because typically when it involves minors and a lot of the details aren't open to the public and you know like sometimes stuff will leak out to the press but back in 1983 when this happened that was before the days of the internet so I did try to see like what it could possibly be and try to look up what like child essays defined as when you're charged with it. 
So any inappropriate touching between an adult and child is SA, and SA does not have to involve penetration, force, pain, or even touching. It says if an adult engages in any kind of behavior, like sexual behavior, like looking, showing, or touching with a minor to meet their interest or their sexual needs, then it's considered SA. So I found this one website that shared some examples of non-contact SA and it says it includes an adult exposing themselves to a child, showing adult content to a child, inappropriately peeking in on a child when they're changing or showering or, you know, touching themselves in front of the child. It also says if a adult is to tell a child to do something inappropriate with another child, then that is also considered SA. So she was like, hey, I want the seven-year-old to touch the four-year-old. And, you know, like with the three different children, if she encouraged that, then that could also be why the charges came about. And it also explains that in most cases, when it comes to SA with children, it's typically a gradual process and not a single event in most cases it's happened numerous times before the person finally gets caught and she did happen when she was 18 i was thinking when i first found out about it i was like okay she was 18 maybe she was dating someone who was like 16 or something but i was so shocked when i saw the ages of the victims in this case so when I did a background check, these charges did come up, but there wasn't any details. And the only other charges on Red's mom's record, well, these aren't even charges on her record because she was sued by some company, but then it ended up getting dismissed, so it's not on her record. And then she was also sued for $2,968 after they claimed that she was overpaid benefits for the period of August 2001 to October 2001. But they ended up having a satisfaction of judgment, which meant that she ended up paying it off. The judge was happy, and they ended up dropping the case. So that is it for this video, guys. I was so shocked, and my mouth dropped as soon as I found out this tea, and I had to run to my computer and share this with you guys. So let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Check out my lashes and cosmetics at CorinaAmber.com. I sell everything from everyday lashes to dramatic lashes, and my lashes can be reused up to 20 plus times, and they're lightweight and comfortable on the eyes and made out of the highest quality synthetic fibers. I also offer bundles and wholesale options if you want to resell, and these are my H26F lashes being rocked by the glamorous Tiffany, and she looks amazing in them. Make sure you tag me in your pictures and videos when you get the products if you want to be featured on one of my videos on my Instagram. But give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.